pad left and the pad right methods of the string class will place text in a field of a specified width and place spaces either before or after the text depending on whether we call pad left or pad right. As an alternative, we can also specify the characters to be placed either before or after the text. In the first example here, I have ABC pad left of seven, ABC being SMCC. And so you can see that it gives me a width of seven characters. The first three are spaces. It recognizes that SMCC is a length of four and fills it, the characters to the left of that with spaces, those three spaces. Do the same thing here with pad left 10. Obviously, we're going to get more spaces to the left. The third example, again with a field of 10, but this time I'm specifying a period as the character. So instead of spaces, it will put periods, what we usually refer to as ellipses. Pad right works the same way, except it's going to put the spaces or the character after the text. So here, SMCC 10, I'm going to get six spaces after that. 14 with a period. And I'll get 10 spaces with periods. And then we can actually use these in combination. So here I do a pad right with seven with asterisk after that. So I get three asterisks after SMCC. And that is all placed in parentheses. And then I do a pad left of that whole thing of 10 characters. So that first part was seven characters. Now I get three hashtags to fill out the 10 to the left. Pad left and pad right are probably mostly used in creating columns for output. Let's take a look at an example. In this project, I set up columns for the abbreviation of a state, the name of the state, and the capital for that state. I've already made some entries for Arizona, Nevada, Oregon, Montana, and you see that it maintains a very nice set of columns for those. Now the key here is we want to use a font that is monospaced, where every character takes up the same amount of width, whether it's an I or a capital W. Courier News is the most frequently used for that. So I've set the, the font to Courier New. This is a label. Let me just click this Add State. You can see we've added in California with the capital of Sacramento. I did the same thing on this bottom. This is a, a text box. In here I have a name of an item, the unit price, and the quantity. And it's going to put in columns for the quantity, the item, the unit price, and then the total cost, which would be the price times the quantity. Again, I've pre-populated this with some items. Wanting to show that I've right aligned the quantity column here as well as the cost columns. In this case, I'm using some ellipses for my preceding character for total cost. So now I've got laser pointer at $350. I'm going to buy three of those. And we see we had in three laser printers. $350 at a cost of $1,050 total. The quantity, the price, and the total cost are being padded to the left, so the right aligned, but the items being padded to the right, so it's left aligned. Up here, same thing. The state is left aligned, and the capital, I actually didn't even do a pad on the capital because it doesn't really matter. There's nothing after it. So I padded here was the state abbreviation and the name of the state. Let's take a look at the code for those. I have a label named LBL state table. Text box is txt state, txt abbrev for abbreviation, txt capital, and a button named btn add state. For this bottom example, I have a text box named txt item table, and then text boxes for txt item, txt unit price, and txt quantity, and my button is btn add item. Let me jump over to the code. So I started with a form load in which I want to create the headers for those two tables. So LBL state table dot text equals, and I took ST as my column heading, and I padded it to the right of four. Then I did a state, I'm going to pad to the right of 20, and then the word capital. Then I concatenated to that carriage return line feed, two underscores. Again, padded to the right of four and five underscores padded to the right of 20 and then seven more underscores for underneath capital. So I'm underlining my headings there. 
for the bottom table, I did the exact same thing. Here I'm using quantity, padding left of six, items, padding to the right of 20, price, padding left of eight, and then total cost, padded left of 12. Padded left of eight, and then total cost, padded left of 12. Then again, I'm concatenating to that, carriage turn line feed, and I use equal signs here to give me a little bit bolder underlining of the column headings and again just padding left and right as appropriate. On that BTN add state button where the user has entered the state abbreviation in capital, all I'm doing here is concatenating to the existing text of LVL state table, a carriage return line feed, and then the value of text abbreviation dot text, that text box padded to the right of four, txt state dot text padded to the right of 20, and txt capital dot text. Again, I don't need to pad it here because there's nothing to beyond that. I clear those text boxes and set the focus back into txt state. For the add item, I went ahead and created variables for the item, txt item dot text, a variable of quantity which is an integer, and took txt quantity dot text and converted that to an integer. And I want to do that because I'm going to use that in a calculation. And then the same thing for the unit price, made that double. We'll assume we're always buying whole numbers of something. So integer and double. So we have a decimal point in the price. And then my item total is the quantity times the unit price. And then here's where I add it to the table. TXT item table dot text. I'm going to concatenate a carriage return line feed. The quantity as a string, padding to the left of six. I did a couple spaces here to put spaces between the columns. Item pad right of 20. By the way, I did spaces up above here in the headers as well between the columns. So pad right 20. Then the unit price, converting that to a string as a currency with two decimals, padding to the left of eight. And item total, again, currency, padding to the left of 12. And here I put the ellipses in just to demonstrate that you could do that. Cleared my text boxes. Actually, I cleared the TXT item, put one in text, put 0.00, .00 in the unit price, and set the focus back to item. Here's another example using pad left and pad right to create columns. I created an application to give examples of index of. So we get a line number, the statement, and the result using this ABC as string and show you the indice numbers there. Here's substring. And here I used ellipses to go across between the substring and the result. And then pad left and pad right. The code for each of these examples is I'm creating my header, just as we did in the previous example with the states. And then for each line, I'm creating a statement the result, where I'm actually using the code to get the result, a line number that's starting at one and then I increment throughout, and then adding to that table, carriage turn line feed, the line number to a string padded to the left, and then padded to the right. That'll create a little column between the line number and the statement, which is padded to the right of 35, and the result, which is padded to the left of five. The only difference for the substring is I padded these with a period for both the statement and the result to get those ellipses. And then here is the pad left and pad right examples. In the next video, I'll show you another way to do columns using string.format. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the Programming Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.